When it comes to borrowing, just where does the buck stop? Is it the bank's fault for lending you too much too easily? Or do you have to take responsibility yourself for getting overextended? Well, it's an issue Lance and Charlene Gleeson have been wrestling with after the BNZ sold their farm for half what they paid for it. They bought it for $2.4 million. Two years later, it's gone for 1.2. Come Monday, they're out of their home and still have to find somebody to put a thousand head of stock. How could this happen? Well, the Gleesons blame the bank, say the BNZ was too loose, didn't do the right checks. Then they admit they didn't do some of those either. Michael Holland with the Gleesons. He's no Alan Crafer, no farming empire builder, just a man with a love of the land. But Lance Gleeson, pretty guarded, and his wife Charlene. Here we are, bugger. Good and proper. Are facing the same humiliating financial ruin. They're taking away our livelihood. They're taking away the family home. And the best I can do is a shed behind my mum's garage to house them. So that's not fair. A world away from the convivial relationship they'd entered into with their bank to buy this sprawling Northland farm two and a half years ago, months before anyone was uttering the word recession with any real conviction. We had no cash to put into it. We borrowed the whole lot. That didn't seem to matter? Um, it didn't seem to matter to them at the time. Um, they were pretty happy to loan the money. Oh, we paid uh, $2.4 million for it. Yeah. yeah plus an additional 200000 to um, develop the property. The bank manager turned around and said to us that um, people are going to be surprised. They're going to think you've won lotto. The Gleesons claiming the manager never set foot on the farm before the purchase, saying he was too busy and asked them to send photos by email. The purchase leveraged against another smaller farm owned by the couple. That farm revalued by the bank to make the deal work. And in doing so, increasing their equity. They valued it at 1.9 million, not with a registered land value. It was done on comparative sales at the time um, in the district, but um, there was nothing immediately close by that had been sold for that pro price. What did you think it was worth in that market? Probably about a million, I think. So I thought, well, OK, if they think it's worth 1.9 million, well, we'll go with that. But um, in reality, it wasn't. The Gleesons say that without that overinflated increase Come in on, their Jim. equity, the deal on. on the second farm wouldn't have been possible. I was hesitant, but thought that the bank, being bankers, knew better. They are the professionals. They, sh they should know what's going to work and what's not. Within a year of buying, the Gleesons found themselves in serious trouble. The farm not supporting the stock numbers and cropping potential they'd hoped. The slippery slope on a drought-ravaged farm. Yeah, yes. It has been, yeah. yeah. It hasn't been pleasant at all. How would you describe the bank's attitude when the you-know-what hit the fan? Pretty tough, um, pretty ruthless, um, uh, certainly not showing any mercy. Some would say, though, you went into this with your eyes wide open. We went into this venture with a partnership with the bank. Um, they called themselves partners, um, and we trusted that they knew better on the financial front. We're just the farmers. This particular bank manager was like Santa Claus over the last two or three years. Regardless of what the figures were, you've got to remember that banks are fair weather friends. We're not without fault but we would actually like them to say, hey, yeah, we made some mistakes too. And that's not what they're doing. A tough man of the land allowed a tear or two? Mm. On occasions, yeah. But a hard country does make for hard men. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to keep smiling, because if we don't keep smiling, they've won. Absolutely won. What about faithful old Kojak here? What happens to him? Kojak is going with me. <laughs> They're not having your horse? They're not having the horse, no. He's the only business partner I can trust. <laughs>
<laughs> so, back to that question, where does the buck stop? We asked the BNZ to come on tonight, they declined. Look, they did issue, though, a brief statement, effectively saying that a mortgagee sales is the last resort. They try and work it out with their customers if they can. They also said that the bank had a strong working knowledge of the farm and its productivity levels. This is the farm where you heard the Gleason say the bank manager didn't even go and visit. And therefore, the specific instance, a site visit was not required. Well, that was as much as we got from them. But joining me now, two people more than familiar with matters of money, but perhaps with very opposing views on just who's responsible for this financial disaster. From interest.co.nz, commentator Bernard Hickey, and from Massey University Centre for Banking Studies, Dr Claire Matthews. Bernard Hickey, you feel sorry for the Gleasons? Actually, no. Let's be, let's be honest here. They went into it with their eyes open. They borrowed more than they knew that they could handle. And they said themselves in the piece that they thought the, the value of the land was too high. It's a bit like when you walk into the dealing room of a, of a car sales room and you're told you need the Ferrari, you really need the Ferrari. And you know you don't really need it, but they decided to go ahead anyway. They said themselves that um, the professionals on the money front were the BNZ. Well, Aren't they supposed to be professionals on the farming front and the financial front? It is a financial business after all. Claire Matthews, you heard them though talk about this was a partnership. They are in a partnership with the bank. Did the bank then, despite the whatever problems the Gleasons got it into themselves, did it breach a duty of care as a partner? I don't think you can claim that they breached a duty of care. Um, they apparently took care to ensure that what they were doing was providing the Gleasons with what the Gleasons were looking for, which was the ability to buy the farm. In terms of a duty of care, they have worked, based on the documentation I've seen, they have worked with the Gleasons in terms of trying to work this out. Unfortunately, it's reached a situation where the only answer was the sale of the property. Because you've got to ask yourself, Dr Matthews, I mean, a bank lent the money to buy a farm worth 2.4 million two years ago, it sold just recently for 1.2. Something doesn't add up in there, does it? Well, I think that actually just reflects the marketplace. The reality is that back in 2007 when they bought the property, the farming prices were going very, very well and they basically bought at the peak. Unfortunately, with the recession and with other issues, the farming market has now reached a bit of a uh, downturn and unfortunately they're selling into that downturn and that's the impact. The other problem is that when you sell at a mortgagee sale, the reality is that because of issues associated with the sale, you tend to get a slightly lower price than you might otherwise. Look, I come back, I mean, were the banks too keen, Bernard Hickey? Were they too keen at that time to pump out the money with not too many questions? Let's face it, yes. And the Reserve Bank too has already criticised the banks for lending too fast and too much, particularly through 2007 and 2008. Remember, the banks were lending very heavily through that period because we had a, a land boom and many farmers saw the potential to make big capital gains on that land. But of course, as we, as we know, with any boom, after that comes the bust. And I'm sure the bank will be just as unhappy with the situation as the farmers. They know that they should have done a bit more due diligence and been a little more conservative. Um, BNZ isn't the only bank in this situation, and all the banks have taken hundreds of millions of dollars of losses. It's not been painless for them either, and now they're all being much more careful with their lending. Are, are we looking at a crisis in our farming sector? I mean, I know Bill Guest, who we saw, and he said he, he said of 25 other farms in a similar situation. There is a significant uh, margin, a marginal group of farmers who are in uh, significant trouble, and the banks have already moved. We've seen the Crafers, we've seen the McVitties. There are other examples where farmers have been pushed to mortgage sale, but the vast majority of farmers have relatively low levels of debt compared to the total value of their land, even after a fall in prices, and we're not looking at collapse here. We're talking about people at the margin being put out of business, unfortunately. Claire Matthews, I mean, when we come back to this, where does the buck stop? I mean, does the bank then, if, if they like a higher margin, if they like a more equity in a property across the board, were they playing it a bit too fast and loose in this case? Because you go, when you look at the paperwork, even back then, this couple had, were carrying a lot of debt before they even bought the second property. Oh, well, I'm not sure that they were carrying a lot of debt. They were carrying a relative amount of debt. Um, I was somewhat surprised to note the extent by which the debt increased from from what I can gather, around 800000 to well over $3 million. That's a huge increase. And in hindsight, that certainly seems to be 
uh, not a good idea. But at the time, when things are a bit exuberant and everyone's very enthusiastic about things, you can be convinced that it's going to work and do the numbers and it all comes out OK. But there's certainly a little bit of question around perhaps the fact that they did only have, by my calculation based on the information I've got, around about 25% equity, maybe 30% overall. And when you're talking about that level of debt, it does seem very high. But farmers have increasingly been going into um, their farming operations with lower equity and actually being able to make a go of it. But it is more difficult. So fair weather friends then? Better well, that's the case with any bank, and and you should know that when you when you decide to take out a loan and actually do the homework, do the analysis to work out whether you can afford it. When interest rates rise, when there's, when there's a drought, and when in, and when the market is down. Bye, beware, same everyone. Clay Matthews and Bernard Hickey, thank you both for your time tonight.